I hope you had a good night, even if it was uh, short. So this morning I will uh, spend a couple of hours to talk to you about natural ventilation in tropical climates. So first I will uh, do some words about theory and then after I will present some case studies. First of all, before doing a survey in natural ventilation, you have to check some preliminary conditions. As I said during my keynote speech, the temperature of the skin is, this is a infrared picture of my home. And here the temperature is 33.3 uh, or let's say 34 degrees. That means that to remove the hair around me, my environment must be at a temperature below 33 degrees. Of course, you need to have no air pollution, no noise pollution. So you have a very healthy environment. You have to have trees around the building. So of course, here, this is a picture of Ahmedabad. And as you can see clearly, this building cannot work with a natural ventilation because it's too, the pollution is uh, too important. Uh, an optimistic uh, uh, view, maybe, is this. Electric cars, electric bikes, electric motorbikes, they don't generate any air pollution. They don't generate any noise. So maybe in 10 or 20 years, all those cars will be electric. So without any air pollution, without any noise pollution. The problem of the big cities, it generated by cars only. So if you sort out the problem of cars, this will have an impact about the design of the building. At the building scale, if you want to use ved uh, natural ventilation, you have to have a, a well-designed envelope. That means you have a insulation on the roof, you have to have solar shadings, you have to have trees around so that you have perfect condition to use natural ventilation. Otherwise, it will be <coughs> too hot inside and you will feel uncomfortable. So this is the, skate, the case of those buildings. Those buildings, this is an post building. I, I presented a few days ago. This is another building. As you can see, lots of vegetation around the building, solar shadings everywhere. And in, this is the case here. Then, once you have done these preliminary, preliminary conditions, there are <coughs> other conditions to use natural ventilation. Uh, you have to check that you have a good wind potential on site. And we will see how to, um, how to check if the wind potential is enough. Then you have to have a good orientation of the openings to use natural ventilation. This angle must be at least 30 degrees. We will see that you always have a high pressure windward and a low pressure leeward. This generates, this difference of pressure generates air velocity inside the building. If the wind direction is perpendicular to the openings, it won't work. Uh, indoor design has a strong effect because you can generate friction air friction. So all the openings inside the building must be perpendicular to the airflow. You have to have porous uh, walls inside. You don't have to stop or to block the air, otherwise it won't work. And those openings must be adjustable, like louvers, sliding windows, because we will see you always have to have a more important surface of openings leeward than windward, so it depends on the wind direction. So you have to be active, active users. You have to open, close uh, louvers. I, al I already presented this slide, but it's very important. We will focus on the step two and step three. Roll of ventilation. In the case of uh, air conditioning building, you need to renew the air at least of one volume per hour. This is called one air change rate per hour. The second 
let's say, um, effect of ventilation is to release the internal loads, to release the heat inside the building. In that case, you need 10 air change rates per hour, and this air change rate generates a air velocity inside the building of 0 0.2 meter per second. Then, if you want to create air velocity inside the building of one meter per second. Why one meter per second? Because with one meter, meter per second, the temperature that, that you feel is the temperature of the air minus four degrees. That means that if it's 30 degrees inside, with your air velocity of one meter per second around you, generated by cross, natural cross ventilation or a ceiling fan, you will feel 26 degrees only because of, because you improve the convection around you. So you can re release more hair, more heat, sorry. So this is really important. In that case, you need 60 air change rate per hour. So we will see, I saw, I met some groups yesterday, if the wind potential is not enough on site, you will be able only to reach step two. And then as the air velocity is not enough, you have to add ceiling fan to generate this air velocity of one meter per second. If the wind potential is enough, that means that just thanks to the effect of the wind, it will work all year round without ceiling fans. This is a kind of cross section we see very often when architect present projects. You see arrows everywhere like if the wind is very intelligent, he knows he has to enter this way, to go out this way, and this way. And sometimes you see uh, arrows on the other side because it's too close, but physically, it has no signification. So the idea at the end of this talk is to understand if this works physically or not. And one of my friends, he often says that architect arrows are evil. Are architect arrows real? Physically, I mean. So we will uh, maybe answer to this question uh, later on. Okay, some words about the wind. Wind is a very fluctuating phenomenon. It varies a lot from one second to other seconds to the other one. It, it varies in direction and in intensity. So it's, we have a, you have a, a mean, you have a standard deviation, and most of the time the variation <coughs> between the mean is uh, in that case 0 0.5 multiplied by the mean or 1.5. So to measure this, you have to measure the wind every 10 seconds at a height of 10 meters. This is the, the, the standard. This is when you, want, when you want to get weather data. And the physical law of the wind profile is a power law driven by this coefficient alpha. And we will see that this coefficient depends on the roughness of the site and from this height. And uh, this is uh, called ZG, is the height where the roughness has no effect on the wind profile, okay? So you have three cases, rural areas, suburban areas, and dense urban areas. And in, in each case, the alpha coefficient is changing and Zg is changing as well. So the power law is different, depends on the roughness of the sites. This is the only equation I will show you today. So but this is really important. It's one of the most important equations of fluid mechanics. It's called Bernoulli's equation. It's a law of conservation. Law of conservation. What does that mean? You know, the pressure, let's say the total pressure, is the sum of three different pressure. This one, we call that static pressure. This one is the pressure that you feel when there's some wind, for instance. It's a, called the dynamic pressure. It depends on the density of the air and the air velocity. The stronger the air velocity is, the higher is the dynamic pressure. In case of cyclones, for instance, you cannot stay stand because of the dynamic pressure. So you have to 
enter in the house and to, pro to protect yourself. So this is caused by the dynamic pressure. This one depends of the altitude. So H is the altitude. Uh, rho is the air density. And G, uh, it's uh, the acceleration. Uh, so normally, here, this value, when you work with the air, not in, the, in, in, a, in a fluid like the water, it's neglectable because uh, the value is very, is, is very low. So you have to focus on this. But the sum of the three, this, this free pressure is constant. For instance, in a, in a case of what we call a, a venturi uh, effect, you have a flow velocity here with a pressure, static pressure, uh, air velocity here, and um, let's say a, a height called H1, but in that case, for a, a, a horizontal, in this case, H1 is equal to H2, so you can remove this. That means that the static pressure and the dynamic pressure, the sum of those two is constant. So here, if you accelerate the flow velocity, how is the static pressure there? Higher or lower here than here? according to you? Lower. So when the wind accelerates, you have a low pressure. So this is why w w what you have to, to remind from the Bernoulli equation. When the wind accelerates, a low pressure. Is that okay? Coming back to the building field. We often used this coefficient, we call that coefficient of pressure because <coughs> what we want to have is the image of the field of pressure around the building. Okay, so this coefficient is the static pressure on site minus the static pressure um, windward divided by the kinetic pressure windward. Okay? And this value varies if the facet of the building is faced, faced the wind or is downwind. Let's say you have a high pressure, always windward, and the, prof the profile is like this. And it varies from 0 0.2 to 0 0.7. At the top of the roof, you have a low pressure because the wind accelerates. Here, the wind stops, so you have a high pressure because of this. If you have no wind, that means that the pressure on the facade is higher. So you have a high pressure there, a low pressure because here the wind accelerates, and on the facade leeward, you have a constant, you have exactly the same value of a low pressure, and the higher the building is, the higher the value of the low pressure is. Um, sir, I wanted to ask, uh, when the velocity increases, the pressure increases or decreases? Aha. So, when the air velocity, the problem of some students is, when I ask this question, you, you, you say the pressure increases because you think uh, the question focuses on the dynamic pressure. When the wind is increases, the dynamic pressure increases. Okay? Here, this value. But I'm talking about static pressure. Static pressure is the pressure that you have around your body, and, in co and it, it is constant around your body. When you have the wind coming to you, the dynamic pressure <coughs> raises, so the sum of static plus dynamic is higher, but the static pressure still remove the same, okay? In case of the wind accelerate around the body, you have low pressure because it's a law of conservation. The sum of those two pressure is constant. So if you have an acceleration here, if this value rise, this one goes down. So when you have an acceleration of the wind, you always have a low pressure. Do you have cyclones in India? Because in rain we have cyclones. Oh, okay. So the stronger the cyclone is, 
the lower the pressure in the center of the cyclone is. The cyclone is a lower pressure. OK? Is, is that more clear? OK. OK, so w what is important is that okay, we have a high pressure uh, windward and a low pressure uh, leeward, and the profile is constant. And if you have a, a high building, this value is more important. So you can generate a higher low pressure. And I the wind inside or the air movement inside the building depends of the difference of those two, pre uh, those two pressure. And it's like heat. The wind always goes from the high pressure to the low pressure. Like the heat flux go to the high temperature to the low temperature. OK, so you need to, uh, you have your project there. And most of the time, you have access to the weather data, and the weather data are collected in the, at the nearest airport. Because at the airport, the roughness is very low. Uh, you have no obstacles. The problem is the airport sometimes is at the distance of 10 kilometers or 15 kilometers from the site. So you have to adjust the wind on site. The most efficient way is to have a, a local weather station so that you can measure the wind on site. If you have big projects, I often suggest, OK, buy a weather station, install the weather station, and record the data one, during one year. So you, you will have a good estimation of the wind potential in terms of wind direction, in terms of wind intensity. Now, on the internet, you can find very cheap weather station. The, the issue is that you have to find a, a, a mast and to record the data at a height of 10 meters. OK? But it's, it's cheap now. If you, if you cannot afford a weather station data, for instance, in the case of your project, you don't have the time to install a weather station on site. So you can use a coefficient of corrections, K1 and K2. You, we will see that K1 and K2 depends on the roughness. And, and, and the topography of the site. And then you have to check. Condition to use natural ventilation on site, you have to check that the mean air velocity is above three meters per second more than 50% of the time. If it, if it is the case, you will use the case free of natural ventilation. You will be able to create 60 air change rate per hour and generate a velocity of one meter per second inside. If it's not the case, you will only be able to uh, use the case number two. You will be able to remove the internal loads and to uh, generate a velocity of 1.2, which is not enough for us to release the heat. And in that case, you will have to install ceiling fans everywhere in the building. Sounds clear? OK. So K1 is the roughness coefficient. It depends of if you are at the sea, in a rural area, in a dense area. So this coefficient depends of, in, in a dense city, for instance, like Ahmedabad, this coefficient is 0 0.4. That means that it's only, you, you can get only 40% of the wind potential that you record in the airport. Then you have a side coefficient. If you have up hill, down hill, at the top of the hill, you have to multiply by, for instance, if you are in a dense area like this, and the, the town or the dense area is located downhill, you have to multiply 0 0.4 by 0 0.6. That means that the wind potential is very low. Okay. Yeah, this, the K, K2 d depends on the topography on site, and K1 depends on the roughness. So you have to estimate what, uh, what is the roughness of your site. Is it, uh, usually in small cities, we use this roughness. In density, like uh, Ahmedabad, we, we, we use this, this roughness. 
So that means that once you collect the weather data at a CSV format, for instance, you have to create a new column and you have to multiply the wind intensity by those two coefficients to generate a new weather file on site. Okay? And, and uh, after you will, once you get this, the, you, you will see what, what strategies you, you, will be, you, you, will be, you will adopt. Is that clear? Yeah, more or less? But we can see that this tonight. Uh, then, the effect of uh, the buildings. So we have, we, we call that a wake effect, effet de sillage in French. Uh, so the wake effect is when you have uh, a wind potential uh, windward, uh, then the wind is uh, disturbed by the shape of the building and how, what is the distance for this building, for instance, if, if your pro project is, is there, what is the distance in between the two buildings so that you can get the same wind potential as this building? Okay, because of the mask created by, by this building. So here, sorry, all the drawings are in French. I hope that uh, they are understandable, but I, I will comment them. So you have uh, uh, a, a wake effect directly behind this building. But to get this value that you have uh, uh, windward, you need at least, let's say, two, at least in the best case, 10 times the height of the building. So in that case, the building you will design here will have the same signal as this one. But of course, it's very difficult to get in, uh, in reality. So we have to find to adjust the building forms, the one to the other ones. So this is some rule of terms. You have, uh, let's say, uh, a bunch of uh, different buildings separated by a distance uh, that I call A and a distance called B and H is the building height. So if those buildings are very close to the other one, that means that if the distance A is uh, around the H, then you, ne you need to have the distance between those two buildings above eight times the height of the building. If you uh, raise the distance between those buildings, for instance, by a, a length of two, twice the height, then, as you can see, B is lower, only three times the, H, the, the height of the building. Uh, another image is instead of having, the, so the wind direction comes from the left hand side, instead of having this organization of the building, use this one. Because you can uh, raise the distance between the two buildings. Uh, I don't have the, the name in English. In French, we say en quinconce. But uh, I don't have the name in English. But uh, with the image, you can clearly see the difference between this organization and this one. It's, it's, this one is like the same. OK. If, OK, so the di you have to put the building in, in, in the free area between those two buildings. Okay, so, 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 so that you can catch the wind easily. Sorry? The longer here? Yeah, of course, the shape of the building itself, the building must be narrow. Uh, a square building is not appropriate, but at, at, at this moment, I'll focus only on the organization of the buildings between them. Then after, we will, be, we will see the organization inside the building. So uh, I, at the moment, the, the scale of my talk is the urban scale. Oh, 
of course, but I focus on tropical, uh, tropical and humid climate. Uh, some of the groups, the project is located in a warm and humid climate. In case of, uh, but I think even in, in a hot and dry climate, I suggest because, uh, like in Ahmedabad, at some times of the year, the conditions are very similar to a um, tropical climate. So it's just the number of the months that changes. But what I say about vegetation around the building, th you can apply this everywhere in the world, just to mitigate the uh, heat island effect. But of course, it will work. But in cities of Singapore, in cities of like Bangkok, they do this. They apply this this principle in, in the new district project. Hot and dry climate, the wind will be harsher, it will be hot. But in a hot and humid climate, it will be having more of humidity. So in hot and dry climate, we'll be trying to lose heat. But, but in, in warm in hot and, and dry humid climate, you, you can generate evaporative cooling. I think a, a strategy that you can have in a hot and dry climate is to use evaporative cooling solutions, uh, windward, for instance, a lake, or uh, just to generate to raise the level of humidity, because uh, I think you have to add other passive solution to uh, hot and dry climates, but I think the principle can be the same. The, uh, the, the main issue that you have in hot and dry climate is that it's very dry, so you have to uh, raise the level of humidity, so it can be an option here. No, my convinced? question was like, we, can we apply the same type of planning for every type of wind place? Because in hot and dry climate, the intensity of wind will be more and the harshness of the wind will be more. Ah, harshness. In, yeah, but in warm and humid climate, the, we will be uh, trying to get a wind inside the building. In hot and dry climate, we try to prevent wind inside the building during the harsh, like hot months. So will this type of systematic arrangement be? Rajan? So uh, I have two comments. One is just to respond to what she was trying to understand. Uh, always try to differentiate between design and operation. Even if you want to operate in a certain manner, if you don't have this, it will not give you a benefit. But that does not mean that once you have this, you don't take care of operation. So when you have outdoor air lower than indoor air, then and then you operate windows. So this is regarding just a window operation. Now, if you are trying to rely on uh, a stack effect or wind-driven ventilation and stuff like that, then it will become a little bit more uh, careful planning. From this type of design, it will require a reasonable amount of engineering. Right? We always try to understand what is design, what is operation. Design needs sometimes engineering aspects, and that is what all of us generally preach. And then design needs, to, that engineering needs to be realized using technology. So this is what the relation design, engineering, technology is. Try to get certain things at certain level. Certain things will be applied at design, certain things operation, and so on and so forth. So that's the first comment. The second comment is, uh, since yesterday, I wanted to make this comment, but I was sort of resisting, but I am seeing that trend a little bit more and more. Uh, being a, a person having a lot of enthusiasm and a lot of questioning, it's good, uh, a good attitude, but Try to raise a question which can help you in the long run. And simply don't ask a very, very specific question that, can I do this? Obviously, you can do this. Can I do this? Obviously, you can't do this. So can we have this and can we, can't we have this? There will be only two uh, answers. Yes, you can have it. You cannot have it. But if you are trying to understand something which you can use over a period of next 40 years, 
try to discuss the subject matter. How and when will this be applicable? And if I have another situation, what is a kind, and those, those, those kind of sort of discussion you have to have within your mind constantly before you pose a question. Um, at undergrad level, uh, generally students have a lot of enthusiasm and want to know very quickly, can I do this, can I do this? So we, I always try to get to this point that across a semester, you just have a, you can ask only two questions. You figure it out what you want to ask. So try to put that also in your, in your, in your mind that is it really, really important question and I want to discuss that with the group and with the expert or can I get this only by reading some books and stuff like that. Okay, so just a quality of question, probably you can, you can deliberate a little bit more. <laughs> no, honestly, I don't, I don't mind answering to the question. Uh, but maybe if you have a very specific question, write them down and we can discuss tonight. If you, if you don't mind. And, but to answer to your question, I think that is, it will work in any kind of tropical climate, either dry or humid, because it, in any case, you have to uh, respect a certain distance from each building to the other one. The only case you, c you use, you, you have to have narrow uh, distance or short distance between the two buildings in the case of climate like in the south of uh, the Mediterranean Sea, where you have huge variation, so it's, let's say, 35, 40 during daytime, and it's 10 at night. In that case, you need to uh, shadow the streets, narrow buildings, close to the others, so that you can use uh, an inertia in, in, in the streets. If you look at the south of Italy, for instance, the old village or in the south of France, the streets are very narrow because they, they, they keep the freshness. In the case of a tropical climate, it's 40, 45, during the day, and it's 30, 25 at night. So you cannot use this effect of inertia of the street. So in any case, you need to respect a certain distance from each building. And then you apply different strategies. For instance, as I said, in a, tro in a hot and dry tropical, you have to add maybe ponds or lakes or to, to create artificial ponds to uh, create a passive eva evaporative cooling effect. In a humid tropical climate, we don't, know, we don't need that because we have a high level of humidity. And that's my opinion. But we can discuss about that uh, tonight. Uh, then other rule of thumbs, rules of thumb to avoid the wet effect. So if you have a succession of different buildings, please respect the distance of five times the height of the building which is located windward. There's a project, I don't remember which one, there's a street there, there's a high building, and, and the site is there. So it's better that you respect a minimum distance between your project and, and, and the building that is located windward. So that you can get, you can use the wind potential uh, at 100%. Uh, I hope that in English it's uh, the right words, the effect of the talk master. You have this building and your building project is there. And to avoid this building as an effect on the field of pressure on the facade of that building, you need to have a distance of three times the height of this building and the surface of this building must be, you have to check if it's below 30% of the surface. In that case, the wind here won't have any effect, the wind of the, bu uh, the building won't have any effect on, on the wind field. Here you have a dense city. So the wind comes from the left hand side. The wind potential can be used only at a distance of the first 200 meters because otherwise, because of the roughness of the city, it won't be possible to use the wind, the, the wind effect here, natural ventilation. In case you have uh, two districts, you have to respect a minimum distance of 400 meters 
between the two districts so that you can use the wind potential here and then you have 400 meters where the roughness is very low and then you can use again the wind potential. So between two districts, two dense districts, you have a minimum distance of 400 meters to respect. Can you see? The, yeah. Okay, now I will focus inside the building. So you have, uh, so first of all, comparison between natural cross ventilation and CV and the stack effect. You have a high pressure there and a low pressure there. If you can create a difference of pressure of three Pascal, you can generate a, a velocity of 1.3 meter per second. Only with a difference of pressure of three Pascal, which is very, uh, it's a very uh, low value. Do you, do you know the value of the atmospheric pressure? 101, 325 Pascal. So, and the difference of pressure is only three Pascal. So it's, it's very few, okay? But three Pascal of uh, difference of pressure generate a velocity of 1.3 meter per second. Stack effect. If you have, uh, uh, so, minimum conditions to, uh, that the thermal stack effect works. You have the indoor temperature that must be above the outdoor temperature. And most of the time, if you are 40 degrees there, you have 30 degrees there, it doesn't work. Or you can have a reverse effect. So the hot air enters in the building. So this is the conditions. So if this condition is respected, but that means that here, if you have 40 degrees, you need to have 45 degrees inside, which is really hot, and uh, this is not uh, exact, uh, precisely the, the condition that, that, you, that, you, uh, that we look for inside the building. But if, if this is the case, if the difference of temperature between indoor and outdoor is five degrees, and the height of the building is five meters, the difference of pressure between the top and the bottom is only one Pascal, and you generate a velocity of 1.0.1, 0 0.3 only, which is not enough because we're looking for one meter per second, okay? So the stack effects only is not enough. What, so the porosity, what I call the porosity is a percentage of openings in each facade. So all what is the minimum percentage? 10%, 50%, 20%. The minimum percentage in my country, in Réunion, is 25%. In the case of the climate I saw yesterday, I think a minimum of 30% would be better. 30% of openings on both sides and inside the building to minimize the friction. Okay? So always have this difference of pressure plus the porosity of 25% on each facade. For instance, this facade, if, you can, if we are able to open every window, I think we have 25% here, so which is good. The shape of the roof has a strong influence of the efficiency of ventilation. As I said, the profile of the low pressure is constant on the facade situated leeward, and the more the facade is high, the more you have a low pressure. So this slope is better than this one. Okay? You understand why now? So when you design a building, you have to check that the air can go from one facade to the opposite one. This is what we call a cross-ventilated building. So in each case, you have to have 25% of porosity is if this facade that I call uh, facade one, and 25% 20, of porosity in facade two. And the surface of openings must be above 
25% of the mean of the two facades. In the case of the rectangle, it's very easy because SP1 here, the surface of facade 1 is and SP2 are equal. Uh, but in the case where you have uh, uh, different shapes, you calculate the mean of the two facades. Okay? And you take 25% of the mean. Uh, for instance, this building doesn't work properly. So each time you, you design a building, you have to check if you have openings on both sides of the building. This is the case here. This is an, uh, uh, an apartment. And as you can see, the air can go through this air here and here. And in, and in winter, when it's, when it's cold, you close everything and you have a, a warmer space. So this is a glad, in, in France, for instance, uh, things are changing because we have heat waves in France and more and more uh, building projects I design like the buildings that are designed in Réunion, in a tropical climate. Because in 20 years, in Lyon, Lyon will have the climate of Madrid in Spain. So, uh, and the building is there for 50 years. So now the designer have to take into account the effect of global warming in Europe. And they copy the design of the tropical buildings. The only things that change is that they have insulation, their walls are insulated, they use double glazing, but let, let's say the architecture, the, the design of the building is the same as the building that we design and the units that we design in a tropical climate now. Uh, so if you have, uh, for instance, an uh, air velocity of, I don't know, 3 meters per second, just keep in mind that inside you won't get the same value. At least you have between 20 to 80 percent. It depends on the porosity, the size of the openings, etc. Et so you have, so we, you have your wind potential with the coefficient K1 and K2. And so this, this will give you an idea of the air velocity that you can get inside. Because w when you do measurements, for instance, on site, in green you have the, the, the wind, and in blue you have the indoor velocity. And there is always a difference. And of course, the indoor air velocity is below the wind outside. You can accelerate. There's some solution that allows you to accelerate the wind inside, the air velocity inside. For instance, instead of having this kind of design, you can r raise the opening area by creating a new opening there. And in that case, you add a 40 extra percent. Your, the indoor air velocity is higher than the, in this case by 40% in this case, and in this case, only 15%. So the idea is to create openings like, like this, but you can create openings by using uh, the different uh, shape of the roof. So all those drawings come from uh, Jacques Gandemer, which is a very famous engineer. And Jacques has worked, he has made a lot of, lot of tests in winter, wind tunnel tests. So all those results come from lots of wind tunnel tests. They are not uh, from uh, modeling, but from real test cases that have been tested in wind tunnel. As I said, uh, maybe a combination of natural cold ventilation and evaporative cooling is if the wind blow, in that case, the wind comes from the right hand side, you can use a pound to uh, raise the level of humidity and then the wind enter. You don't create any air friction because the, rough, the roughness here is very low. Uh, so you can use a combination of natural coarse ventilation and evapor evaporative, ev evaporative cooling. Okay, this is a, a case study that I did uh, uh, many years ago, just to explain. This is a, a two-story apartment. So you have one bedroom here, the living room, 
kitchen, and you have a stairway, and you have two bedrooms there. First of all, it's naturally cross-ventilated. So you check that. Then after, how, how, how can you calculate what, what we did? So I calculate the surface of this facade, 10 square meter. I calculate the surface of this facade. Uh, bathroom and toilets, we don't count them in the calculation because of course we try to, uh, we, uh, we assume that doors are closed and so you, they cannot contribute to, have, uh, to the natural ventilation. So if you calculate the mean between 16 square meters and 10 square meters and you multiply by 25%, you've got the surface of openings that are required on both facades. So this is very easy to calculate. Okay, is that clear? So then, uh, in that case, uh, you, are, you had the, the front door and we had louvers in the kitchen so that we can reach this value of 3.24 square meter. In the other case, there originally there was a, a, a window there and a, what's the term in English? A, do, a door window? Openable window, but for this side. Okay. French window? <laughs> okay. And in this case, originally there was only that window, and the surface of the window is one square meter. So, what we suggest to the architect is to add louvers on both sides to increase the openings. Maybe here it will be, and so the red dots are specific um, cable for ceiling fan. If we, look at the, if we look at the facade, so this is the original window. There were, there were shutters that have been designed originally by the architect, but we asked the architect to replace plain shutters by Venetian shutters, so that the, the I, when the shutters are closed, you can ventilate the room. And these are op opaque blinds. Why opaque? Why not gla gla glass louvers? Because we could have suggested glass louvers here. But the function of this is just natural ventilation. And remind that when you want to uh, use natural ventilation, you have, you have to check that at the same time, this opening is shaded. So glass louvers, you can use natural ventilation, but you have no shading. Opaque louvers, you have bo both, you, you reach both objectives, natural ventilation and solar shadings. Okay? I think there is a picture, so you can see here, the window, the shutters, one very important thing is this small metal bar because it allows on the shutter we have holes and with the, this metal bar we can hook, there's a hook, so that the shutter can, can stay at this position so that you can use them as solar shadings. In Réunion, people didn't use that and in the south of France, it's very common. Pierre presented a lot of uh, different uh, solar shading uh, solutions. He forgot to mention that this is really important. Because if, if you don't have this, you can use the shutter open or closed only. But with this uh, very simple option, you can change the angle of the shutter and it, it, it won't move, even if it's, uh, you have strong winds. OK, this is a... This, uh, the project is called Tamarin 2. Tamarin is the name of a tree uh, in, in a tropical climate. And Tamarin 1, so it was exactly the same architect. And between the two projects, you have the streets. So you can clearly see when uh, I visit this project with my students. So on the left hand side, you can see Tamarin 1, and the other side, you, you can see Tamarin 2. What changed? Here, you have solar shading, you have 
shutters, but the shutters are plain. So people inside, at night, he closed the shutters because, he don't, because, because of this, someone can climb and enter in the room. So you have, uh, for security reasons, everything is closed. He has no natural ventilation. It's very hot, very hot at night because he has no possibility of ventilation. The same person, just uh, 10 meters from this building, has this option, so he can close the shutters, the ventilation uh, is good, and if, he, if it's not enough, he opens the louvers, the opaque louvers, so he feel comfortable, and he has an air velocity of one meter per second. So same location, different option. Okay. If the building now is very, uh, the thickness of the building is above 10 meter, cross natural ventilation, Natural is not enough because of air friction. So you have to find other solution. Another interesting solution is what I call a low pressure shaft. So you have to create at the top of the roof an opening that generates a venturi effect. So the wind is captured and is accelerated by this uh, <coughs> shaft. So if the wind is accelerated, you create a low pressure at the top of the roof. That means that if the wind comes that from the left hand side, you have always high pressure, windward, low pressure, leeward, but this low pressure is higher than this one. So you can have, you multiply the possibilities of air movement inside the building. From this facet to the top of the roof, you can of course use uh, natural cross ventilation and there is also a possibility of from this low pressure to, to this to the top of the roof so this is in the case of the um, let's say the length of the building exceed 10 meters so you can use the, this kind of the design in case of dense urban area for instance you have a dense urban area with low possibility to use the wind. So your project is here, but the condition so that the low pressure shaft works is that the building, the, the height of the building is above the height of the surrounding buildings. So that you can get the wind and you can create, generate this low pressure at the top of the roof. If the height of the building is below the surrounding buildings, it won't work. Is that clear? Okay. So for a multi-story building, it works like that. You always have to respect the 25% porosity of uh, openings there, 25% here, and then you create a low pressure shaft and natural ventilation work like this. So this is in the case of dense urban areas. Some rule of thumbs. What is the height of the chimney? What is the height of the shaft? What is the surface of the shaft? So some very simple rules. In the case of the slope roof, you need to have a height of uh, 50 centimeters at least. One meter is better, but 50 centimeters is enough. Okay? The area, the area must be 20, at least 20% of the total surface of the building. Okay? In the case of terrace roof, you need to have at least a height of 2 meters. 3 meters will be better. Why? Because the wind, I forgot to mention this, we, you have a, what we call a shear layer. It's a layer that is located uh, at the first meter of, from the slope of the roof. So to get a uh, stable uh, wind effect, you have to uh, design the shaft to uh, above this shear layer. That means that in that case, the shear layer is there. And so as you have a height of two meters, you can catch the, the, the good uh, wind signal. Everything is clear? 
Yeah, more or less? I will help you in any way. I will be here till the end of the week. So if you want to design a low pressure shaft, don't worry, I will be there. But the, 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 this uh, works well. So now, question, does this project work in terms of natural ventilation? Now that you are young junior experts in natural ventilation, what would you change as an architect? Here, the problem here, can you generate a low pressure with this? What happened here? You have lots of friction. So you cannot generate, you cannot accelerate the wind with this solution. So what do you suggest? Remove everything. Remove everything. Consider that the atrium is the outdoor. And design a low pressure shaft. Here, this wall must be at least two or three meters. Remove all this and three meters there. And it will work. Otherwise, it, it, it won't work. Or you have maybe to, uh, if you have, for instance, a cold winter and a warm summer, maybe this part, you can uh, design it so that you can open this part very easily. But everything can be open. This is another option. The idea is to create a big openings facing the sky. If you think that if you open vertical openings to create an acceleration of the wind, forget about it. It won't never work because too many are friction. OK? So the idea is to open. And in that case, those arrows will work from there to there, like this. OK? So this is a cross-section that I uh, capture from the internet. It's exactly the same. You will see plenty of cross-section like this on the internet about a project. Do you really think that cross-ventilation will work? If you have an apartment here, an apartment here, do you see yourself knocking at the door and saying to your neighbor, oh, can you open the door so that I can use cross-ventilation in my apartment? <laughs> Honestly. OK, so the only option in that case is to create this low pressure shaft. OK? Other problems. You have designed a natural cross ventilated dwelling. So this is an image in La Reunion. What happened? Visual intimacy. Because the architect has forgot that people don't like to be seen. So what they do is that they go to the supermarket, they buy this, and of course, forget about natural cross ventilation with this solution. Whereas, the good, po the, the good point of this project is sh shutters. This is a, a bedroom with movable louvers. And as you can see, people use it. The louvers are not closed, they are open. That means that they, they use it correct, correctly. So, so there's something wrong. You have to find a solution for to, to sort out this problem of intimacy. So Pierre has shown lots of examples of solar shading. There's some other example. I like this one. It's a, a picture that I took in Sydney in a place called Darling Harbour. Why I like this one? You remember the image of the boat? Because this kind of facade, I like the idea of, of a liveable building, where the facades change from one day to the other one. For instance, and it, it, the idea is to give the user, the, to give the occupant the possibility of doing what he wants to do in terms of solar shadings, in terms of natural ventilation. OK? So this is an option. So you have aluminum blades from the top to the bottom. And the upper part is movable from vertical to horizontal. And for me, it's a perfect, it's a perfect solar shading because you, here, this person, for instance, I think he, 
<coughs> he went to go to work. He's not there. This one, maybe it, it, it is not there, but he, he wants to keep his apartment naturally ventilated. This one closed. This one, maybe, is at home. So he, pon he opened everything. This one is at home, but he, he doesn't want to be seen. So, you know, everyone has a possibility to do what he wants. In that case, you have any choice. So the only choice the equipment do is to, to, to find solution by themselves. Another example, it's different, but it works the same. So movable louvers, and they can slide, and they can put aside as well. Another example of solar shadings in Iranian. So you have fixed shadings here. It's uh, architectural practice. It's an architectural practice that designed uh, that building called Ilet du Centre in the south. Mm -hmm. uh, you have apartments at the top, and it's the same principle. Sliding uh, doors, uh, but in that case, the louvers are fixed. You have, you have not the possibility to, uh, to uh, adjust the angle. And here you have uh, fixed solar shadings, but inside you have uh, uh, glass louvers. Here, the picture, sorry, is not that good, but okay, we, you are in a, in a living room, and you are facing the veranda is outside, so you have a sliding door plus louvers at the top. So th this was an option we had with the architect. You can have louvers aside. So there's a, a, an infinite <coughs> possibilities, I think. In the case of the same building project, you have the, uh, the main door here, and close to the main door, you have louvers, opaque louvers at the top and, and, and the side. So that if the person close the door, the apartment can be ventilated. And uh, all the louvers are opaque for intimacy. In that case, it was one of the first uh, building that has been, the, uh, it, uh, the first building that has the local label that is called, uh, that, that is called Ecodome. These louvers are, these are bedrooms. And uh, so we have opaque louvers uh, at the bottom for intimacy and glass louvers. And solar shadings are used with the concrete wall. And as you can see, solar shading are efficient because uh, the shade is here, the shadow is here. And, 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 and users, occupants, have the choice to, uh, to adjust with the louvers the level of uh, air velocity they, they want in their bedroom. So some case studies, the, the lecture theater, the bioclimatic uh, lecture theater, I presented uh, uh, two days ago, but uh, I will focus more on uh, natural ventilation. So all the building is a light stru structure. The structure is in wood, and the facades are, are in wood as well. So the principle, the, so we have created a, a low pressure shaft, the U shape, three by three meters, and the wind is accelerated. So it's the natural pump is there. We have louvers on each side, so the distance is, is uh, 30 meters, so more, more than the 10 meters. This is why we, because without this, natural cross ventilation uh, uh, doesn't work. And we also, so underneath the seats, uh, we created uh, these openings, you, we have louvers, so that we can uh, refresh the ground underneath the seats. And this space is open. So you have, uh, I don't know the name in English, but in every vertical space, it's open, so that the can, air can be sucked up to, to the roof. So every, even the seats, so the wind tunnel test. So the wind tunnel test, you have pressure sensors that give you the coefficient of pressure. So we are able to calculate the difference of pressure on each facet of the building to check if we are more than three Pascal. And we are able to generate a velocity of one meter per second. And here there's a smoke 
just to check that the shaft works well. So the wind comes from that way. And uh, as we don't have any material on the vertical part of, of the lecture theater, you can see that the smoke <coughs> goes out and, is, and it is sucked up by the roof. So in terms of design, we, we had, uh, you see there are the small holes there. It's just to have a porous seats. Even the back of the seat is with a mesh so that we can uh, increase uh, air movements around the occupants. So every details are important in that, in that lecture theater. We did a post-occupancy evaluation. My student did a post-occupancy evaluation. Here the, the picture is dark, but it's exactly the same materials that uh, Rajan I show you uh, a few days ago. Exactly, you have a black globe temperature, air velocity. Uh, we have the air temperature, the air humidity. And so we do measurements. Uh, you have uh, the measurement of, we spend several times this, and, and we, we did a survey with the users. So this was the conditions of this survey. It was in February, so we, in February is in summer. It's hot. And as you can see here, we, the conditions during the survey were are there. So close to the, bigger, uh, to the biggest Givouni zones. So th in theory, we need one meter per second here to feel comfortable. We record air velocity. As you can see, the signal is very unsteady, but the mean is around 0.2. So normally, users feel uncomfortable. In, during this time, it was a four hours lecture. There were 74 people. Uh, the temperature at the beginning in the air was 28 degrees. At <coughs> at the, in the end, it was 29 degrees. The globe temperature was slightly above, but only 0.4 degrees. That means that we have no radiant surface. And the velocity was 0.2. So normally, everyone will say, I'm really uncomfortable. And for fortunately, here are the results. Thermal sensation and thermal judgment. Thermal sensation, they have to answer are you cold, warm, slightly warm, etc. cetera? Uh, green is uh, neutral, neither warm nor cold. At the beginning of the class, at 10, 60% of the people felt neutral, and in the end, 70. Slightly warm, yellow, 18%, and 15%. So what we look in terms of uh, satisfaction, Rajan has told you that we need to have at least, you remember the percentage? 80%. Okay. So 70 plus 15, fortunately, 85%. And of course, you have people on the range that feel hot and 3% very hot. Okay? This is thermal sensation. Thermal judgment is slightly different. The question you have to answer is, do you feel comfortable? Do you feel slightly uncomfortable, uncomfortable, very uncomfortable? Whereas here, it's cold, warm, <coughs> You see, the, you see the difference. Okay? So, at the beginning, 81% felt, felt comfortable. So that, that means that, you can see, there's a difference between the thermal sensation volt and the th thermal judgment volt. Because some people, they say, okay, I feel slightly hot or slightly warm, but that's fine. I'm comfortable. So it's, this is why it's really important. And in the end, same percentage, 80%. So fortunately, despite we have a low air velocity, people are more or less happy. So we have a good feedback overall because it, it was a hot day. Uh, in terms of air movement, we ask them, would you prefer to have more air movement, no air movement? Do you want to change something? 41% ask, I don't want to change anything. And, but 41 plus 9% need, I need more air movements. 
So 50% of the people answer that they need more air movement. The problem in, in that lecture theater is that it's used for uh, theater, cinema, and we have a projector here. We cannot use ceiling fan because the projector is here. So we, the idea originally was to uh, install a very big fans to extract the air, but we didn't have the budget. So at, at this stage, we have no possibility to increase the velocity inside. But so the lecture theater has been delivered uh, four years ago. I came each academic year at the beginning to explain the philosophy of the lecture theater because it's really important because it's a bioclimatic lecture theater without air, without any air conditioning systems. So what the communication is really important. So I, I begin, the, the academic year starts in September, so I went on stage explaining why we're doing this. It's a university policy. We want to reduce the consumption of CO2 emission, etc., etc. Et just to say to the people, to the students, that maybe in summer, they will feel uncomfortable at, during a certain time of the year, so that they are warned, and so that they have a kind of acceptance of this. If you don't do this, it won't work. And what we did, because uh, I don't have the time to come each September at the beginning of uh, the academic year to meet all the students, I will have a lecture here. So what we have done, we have uh, uh, installed at the entrance of the lecture theater panels to explain what is thermal comfort, what, wh why we uh, designed this uh, lecture theater, what do they do if they feel, if they feel uh, warm, so, to, to, so, so, so it's a kind of uh, poster that explains how it works. In terms of uh, temperature me measurements, uh, we have, you have a set of uh, five days where we measure the outdoor temperature, pink, dash line here, and we have two sensors inside the lecture theater. The hottest day, which is here, the 12th of February, 2016, the temperature inside was, uh, outside, sorry, was 31. And for all days, w the indoor temperature never exceeds the outdoor temperature, which is good. So at least we have, okay, uh, this uh, green sensor. So the stage is here. Uh, this sensor is located near the louvers, so, and, and we realize that uh, you, there's uh, comfortable areas in, in, in the lecture theater and specifically close to the louvers because you can feel their movements. So in that case, the green line, there's a difference of two degrees between outside and inside. First comment. Second comment, we don't have any delay between the maximum inside and the maximum outside. That means that in terms of thermal inertia, we have a high inertia building or low inertia building? Low. low. Okay? In case of a high inertia building, you will have the maximum with a delay of, let's say, two hours. And you won't have the variation night and day like this. Night and day in this lecture theater is more than three degrees. Uh, the variation outside is one, two, three, four, five degrees. Okay? So three degrees, that's fine. In a low inertia, in a high inertia building, the variation between the maximum and minimum is uh, two, two degrees. We did some uh, wind measurements with anemometer inside, and uh, there's some, so, Let's say the average temperature is 0.4, but it was, the wind outside was really strong, eight meters per second. So this is why we had this value. In case of you have a, a wind, oh, and, and there was a weather station data that we installed in, 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 the, in the shaft. Uh, so eight meters per second outside generates this velocity. So there's a, 
as you can see, there's a difference. So in case we have only three meter per second, just imagine the uh, velocity that we have inside, only 0.2. <coughs> Another case study is the renovation of a uh, building, a uh, very old building uh, uh, constructed in the 60s. In the city of Le Tampon, it's uh, at a four meters uh, height in, in La Réunion. So lots of concrete, a uh, few solar shading inside the building. This is what, what we have. We have a double loaded corridor, classroom on both sides, and glass roofers here. So originally in this building, it was very uncomfortable in terms of noise because you, if students are there waiting, shouting, discussing, you can hear everything in the classroom. So we have really a problem of acoustic problems. Uh, the structure of the terrace roof is for just one level building. And you can see we have a concrete beam like this. And it's very important because the architect will have a very nice idea of using this structure for natural ventilation. You will see later on. So we launched a competition to renovate that building and the winner of the competition suggested that project. Very nice, lots of PV panels. Of course, in the end, due to the lack of budget, the PV panels have been removed because you, you didn't have the budget. But you, you have to focus on, on these magical arrows suggested by the architect when he submitted this project, you can see. So you have the corridor, glass louvers, glass louvers, and the air, very intelligent, can go that way, sucked up and out. So this is the kind of project that we have. And of course, physically, there's no reason why the air can go that way. No reason, no explanation, no physical explanation. In any case, so th these boxes were just to, were used for light because we had <coughs> the size of the classroom or seven meter hey, here. S it was for light and for ventilation as well. So we did some wind tunnel tests on this project and finally it appeared that it doesn't work. But it doesn't work when you see that, as I explained, either you use a, a low pressure shaft, but in that case you have too much air friction, so you cannot generate the low pressure to, that, to encourage the, the wind to go that way and to be sucked up because you have too many, uh, too much uh, air friction. So, it doesn't work. So the architect in Jacques Gandemer, the, the engineer specialized in wind engineering, he changed the concept of, of the roof. And he suggested this. How does it work? The idea is to use that principle. So you have, so the cross section is this image. The wind, the trade wind comes from here. The idea is to capture the wind with large glass louvers, open the sailing like this, so that you allow the air to, to enter, and you have louvers here, okay? This is a very, very, um, let's say, bright solution because the corridor, which is like this, the, my students used to call it the, the corridor of the deaf. <laughs> Very encouraging to go to attend a, a, a class. So he opened every square here, broken, just to, and thanks to that, so this is the corridor, and you can use daylight. But it's not open, you just have glass because the idea is to uh, isolate the corridor to the classroom. Otherwise, you will have a problem of pressure, problem of air. So here, you just have glass. You use daylight for the corridor. And the air goes from there. Here, it's broken, so you are in, in, in the classroom, you are in the classroom there. So you have 
for each class, you have three of these uh, sh uh, sheds. One, two, three. And for this class, one, two, three. For this class, one, two, three. So in terms of ventilation, it's kind of cross ventilation. And it's very bright because we have a double loaded corridor that works well in terms of daylight, in terms of natural ventilation, and in terms of acoustic. The architect are sort out of three problems by this solution. And of course, we did a wind tunnel test, and this time it worked. Uh, so this is a, so the first solution of this corridor in the classroom, but at the back of the building, we have practical work with less students. Uh, so this solution that I presented was here, and here it was a different one. Here, you may recognize now, a low pressure shaft. So it's a different solution. So this is during the construction work. So originally the, there was no hole, so everything was open. So this is the uh, lips of the shaft, uh, at least two meter. This is a cross section of the low pressure shaft. This is inside. This picture here is there. So everything has been open, of course. You have the structure and you have the final results. So we have classrooms there, classrooms there, and there's plants. So it's considered, this space is considered to be outside because you have plants, you have earth, and of course you have to manage the education of rain in case of uh, huge rains, but it's like uh, open space. In a space open to you. Okay? Last project, I think. No, I have two other projects, but uh, I still have time till uh, 11, I think. So this is the uh, Faculty of Engineering. So the idea, it's, it's, it's a very dense, 3,500 square meter to build on a limited space. So in terms of natural ventilation, it's quite complicated. So the, the general shape of the building is a C. There you have a very big <coughs> umbrella that shades the, the space which is open to the outside. And uh, Rajan yesterday presented different strategies in terms of natural ventilation, mixed mold building. So this is exactly what we did. We had three levels at the ground level. So in terms of colors, pink, air conditioned spaces, uh, let's say orange, mixed mode, uh, so it's, it can be naturally ventilated or air conditioned, and in green, natural cross ventilated. So we have three different uh, possibilities and three different uh, scenarios for, the, for the, these areas. So ground level, lots of air conditioned space because they are used for the agro-food industry department. We have uh, at the Faculty of Engineering we have a um, uh, department for uh, agro-food industry, and they need to have lots of cool space because uh, of the uh, food. So they have to be stored, and uh, all their practical, <laughs> the practical work need, need to be air conditioned. We have a lecture theater. Uh, it's, it's a mistake, but the lecture theater, in that case, is air conditioned. So the, the color should be pink. And then here we have uh, computer rooms that are air conditioned during the autumn months, uh, January, February, March, and the rest of the year uh, they use natural cross ventilation. The level, first level, as you can see, no air conditioned spaces. Now we just have mixed mode spaces and natural ventilated spaces. Here we have only tutorial rooms. So all those rooms are naturally cross-ventilated. And the last level, there's an office for researchers, PhD students, master students, administrative staff, no air condition. The space, I have a 3D image of a typical uh, office, but it's a rectangle three by six, where we can put two people, two staff members. So 
Mechanical uh, ventilation is just for technical uh, rooms. So it's just there. There. For instance, mechanical ventilation here, we store the computers just uh, for stocking stuff. We just use mechanical. So it's just air renewal. Okay, so the principle in terms of uh, low pressure, high pressure is the C shape. The C shape is very interesting because if so the, here in Réunion, the trade winds come from the southeast. The mean uh, value of the wind is six annu annually, is six meter per second. So above the three meter per second limit. So the idea is to generate a high pressure in the middle of the C shape. And then here the wind accelerates. So you have a low pressure along the facade. The problem is here, because here the red line is a kind of uh, airproof uh, textile so that you can generate this uh, high pressure. Without this, you can have, uh, we cannot uh, generate uh, high pressure, so it's very important. But here, in that case, we have uh, high pressure, high pressure, so the same value of pressure. So it, it it cannot work in terms of natural ventilation. This is why the solution that we had was to create a low pressure shaft along all the administrative section of the building. So the shaft is here. This is this rectangle. Because we cannot use natural ventilation here. So the shaft, thanks to the shaft, we have a low pressure there. So the distance of two meters above the roof is respected. And so it can work. So this is the, here you can see the shaft, here. So it's open. So in terms of daylighting, we, we will have high reflective, uh, let's say, surfaces. So in terms of daylighting, it will be very good here. And we have a plants in case of it rains to collect the rainwater. So in terms of I indoor design, the indoor design, so to come back to my lecture, urban, uh, I started my, uh, my lecture at the urban scale, then after I, foc I focus at the building scale, and then after you have to focus at the office scale. It's very important. For instance, you see those two people there? Where do you put the louvers? Here or here? Just keep in mind that the airflow must be used for the users, not by the desk. The, the desk. So the position of the louvers is really important. So we ask to the architect to design where the office will be to be sure that the uh, louvers will be installed, installed at the correct position. Same for the ceiling fan. We asked the architect to do this design so that we can install uh, precisely the ceiling fan, to be sure that it will be uh, above the, you, the occupant. So each detail is really important, even the doors. In that case, because we are not in an apartment, the door must be open. The office door must be open. How can you maintain the door open if you don't think of the device that maintains the door open? Because some of the time you just have something that avoids the, the door to bump in the wall, that's it. In case you have uh, air movements, the door can close. So we have these uh, magnet devices. So we have the, exactly the same device in, in a hotel. I just noticed that in, in a hotel, maybe check in your uh, room, you can maintain your door open thanks to um, a, a magnet. So we ask in this project to do this. If you forget this, you, the user will, will be, uh, won't be happy because the door will slam, blam, 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 and they say natural ventilation doesn't work. So every detail is really important in this kind of project. Every details. 
Uh, now we'll present a social housing project in the city of Le Port, which is located in the northeast of uh, northwest of La Réunion, which is the hottest city in La Réunion. Very hot, very dense. In terms of building height, you can see a slight difference with India, at least uh, three levels only. But the project <coughs> called Flores Malacca is here. The School of, of Architecture is just uh, there. And some of the students of the School of Architecture, they live there. But it's a social housing project. The particularities of the project in terms of passive strategy, so this, this project, as you can see, is higher than the other project around, surrounding. So a six-story building, whereas the mean is a three-story. But six stories, very thin building, all units are cross-naturally ventilated. Uh, we have, so the, the architect has planned different shapes of solar shadings. You have hoverings here. As you can see, the solar shades works perfectly because they shade the uh, openings. And they did some modeling uh, with uh, SketchUp to optimize uh, the position of the shape. Uh, we have detached corridor. I will explain uh, what is this. And we have a building integrated PV roof at the top that are uh, used to shade the first level here. PV here, PV here. So this is an aerial view. You can see the difference of uh, solar shading systems here, overhangs, vertical here. Uh, the corridors, as you can see, are in a light structure. This is this to avoid the building to store heat. So this is a very, uh, never very interesting solution. And in terms of renewable, uh, the PV power install is the 88 kilowatt peak and solar thermal 200 square meter. So this is for the production of the entire building. So in terms of uh, demand and production, the demand is uh, 20 kilowatt hour of electricity per square meter per year, whereas the PV projection is 16. So it's not a net zero energy project, it's a near zero energy project. If I focus on the design of units, so you have the corridor here, corridor there, and so in that case, we, all units have the porosity of 25% on both facades. So, and it works well. Here you, you have a one bedroom unit and here a two bedroom units. The problem of this kind of units is this. You have a corridor that is attached. So this is exactly these units because you have door, uh, louvers for the kitchen, and louvers for the bathroom. But if you look at the picture I took, what happened? Door is closed, and you have curtains here and here because of user behavior and visual intimacy. So in theory, it works. In practice, it doesn't work because of the user behavior. So as an architect, what solution do you suggest to solve the problem? First, replace glass louvers by glass, but you know, I don't know the specific treatment so that you cannot be seen. So to allow the, the light to enter, but not to be seen. So there's a specific treatment. <laughs> Not a, you, you, do, uh, we, you project sand at a high pressure to polish, polish uh, glass uh, louvers. Yeah. So this can be an option. First, as I said, details are very important in, in this kind of project. So you, we can sort out this. The front door, what do you suggest? because it's a plain door. And it's a plain door because of five safety reasons. <laughs> Sorry? I don't understand. North? North? Ah, the orientation? No, it's not an issue of orientation. It's an issue of uh, sorting the fact that the user behavior maintained. North East, West, oh, this is not an issue. Because 
if it's a north facade, the, you have enough shading, because if, if, we tell me, if you think in terms of shading, if, if it's a waste facade, you just have to do this. For instance, you add some vertical shading. So it's, for me, it's not the issue of this. The issue is how the user, how can you the user can use natural ventilation because in fact he, he don't use because he's not happy with uh, this design. You can use louvers, opaque louvers, a side. This is an above, a side, like the picture I show you. This, this can be an option. You can design a new door with integrated louvers. This is another option. Or you can use detached corridor. This is another interesting <coughs> solution that allow the indoor, the detached corridor, it allows to create a buffer space, it allows to get intimacy of the people, and it acts as a solar shading. It's, so it's a new concept that has been developed by some architect in La Réunion that are really interesting. This is another project in the south of La Réunion. So this building here, it's a long rectangle building. All the dwellings are cross naturally ventilated. And you have this structure, light structure in wood, and the corridor is not attached to the facade. So th this picture has been taken at the top level, and this picture has been taken at the ground level. So you can create a very nice atmosphere, because you, we have plants, you have this uh, structure, and all the occupants are their own entry. So it's private. Here it's very fresh. And the main facade in concrete is always in the shadow. So for me, uh, to sort out the problem of intimacy of people, the detached corridor can be very interesting. Because you sort out everything. Ventilation can work. Intimacy can work. I don't see any constraints of doing this. Okay. So, oh, Auroville, back in India. Uh, so this is a part, so uh, Rajan uh, has, has uh, shown lots of project in Auroville, but there was this uh, Lechi project. We, we had, a, this is a result of a project, international project that gather India, Iranian, Thailand, Vietnam, and Sri Lanka. The idea was to share the knowledge uh, about uh, the design of low-cost housing project, affordable projects. So the idea is to each country has uh, selected 10 projects. Golconda was, was one of the projects. Golconda was presented yesterday by Rajan. But this is a, a, a very nice apartment project because it's, uh, it's exactly the same principle. So uh, as you can see, the units, I like this solution. Why? Because for intimacy inside the apartment, if you create this space, you can use natural cross ventilation just for the bedroom. Whereas if the facade is there, you use cross ventilation, but you have to maintain the door open so you can have acoustic problems, for instance, if the parents are here and the children are there. So in that case, with this kind of simple solution, the bedroom can be autonomous in terms of natural ventilation. So from theory, calculating the surface of uh, openings to practice, this is the idea of giving you some, how can I do to uh, use natural cross ventilation, but after you have other constraints as an architect, acoustic problems, uh, design problems, where do I put the uh, kitchen, the table, etc. So, so, so this is to share maybe the, some case studies to, to give you some ideas. But in any case, you will be innovative, be innovative, uh, because every project has its own constraints. But the detached corridor 
keep this ID in, in mind because it works perfectly well. User behavior, so user can adapt. This building is an energy building. As you can see, the facade was supposed to be shade because the architect uh, thought that uh, the use of plants could be used to shade. But in any case, because of maintenance problem, ment plants can be a, an option. But for me, uh, never consider that plants will grow up and, and will shade the facade because if you have uh, maintenance problems, it won't work. So <laughs> the user has adapted to the lack of solar shading outside. I like <laughs> this picture. Uh, just, uh, I, I've al almost finished. It, it's, uh, this is a, a very dense uh, district in the center of the capital city. Uh, those buildings have been, uh, uh, have been built in the 60s, and um, this, is, uh, this is a low-cost housing building. Very dense, no solar shading, lots of cars everywhere, three trees only, very uncomfortable in the middle, <laughs> as you can imagine. So what can we do? And, and the trade winds come from this direction. And the picture has been taken there. So what we did, so it's a French uh, research project that I coordinate. It uh, started uh, three years ago. We did a model of a district. So the building, this area here, is there. So each building, we have uh, six uh, pressure sensors by facade, three at the roof. And this is the uh, wind tunnel test in uh, the laboratory Eiffel. So we did some wind tunnel tests. And we suggested some strategies to improve, because we could calculate the difference of pressure on each facade of each building. And so we check if we have the uh, uh, variation of pressure of more, more than 1.4. And those buildings, so the trade winds come from here. Those building works well, but here it was a disaster in terms of natural ventilation. So what we suggested to the municipality of Saint-Denis to remove the building one here, destroy it, because here this building is too close from this one. So the distance, the minimal distance is not respected, so we suggested to remove it. First strategy. Second strategy. Put all the building on stilts. Is that clear? Stilts. We, you destroy, we destroy the ground level. For what reason? It's just to um, improve the urban control level at the pedestrian for pedestrians. Okay. First reason. Second reason, to put the car underneath the building, and the the space that he used for car, we, you, we remove the coat and we put earth and we plant trees to uh, add vegetation and trees around the buildings to create a heat island effect. So different objective. Those buildings are, are double lot buildings. So we, we propose some uh, indoor design to uh, improve porosity for th these buildings. And then here, there is a school there. And we suggest to change the shape of the school. The original shape is uh, like this. We suggest uh, to destroy that part of the school and to create the C shape to have the effect of getting here a low pressure in the middle and a uh, high pressure in the middle, sorry, and a low pressure around. Now you can understand what I'm saying. Okay, so the strategies I, uh, I explained to you can be proposed at uh, the district scale and for renovation. As well. And of course, we did the wind tunnel test before and after. The idea is to, why suggesting those changes? Do we change the field of pressure 
around the building. That means that we change the potential of ventilation inside the building. And the answer was no. The difference of pressure between each facet was not altered by the changes, but at the pedestrian level, we could improve the air velocity. So for the comfort of the pedestrian around the buildings, it has been improved without sacrificing the comfort inside the building. And last thing, and I think this is my last slide, everything, all these design strategy cannot work if you don't install ceiling fan in case of your, because all these things works if you have wind. Some days you cannot have wind. You may not have wind. So what do we do? So the idea of selling fun is just to compensate, to balance the, the lack of uh, wind outside. So this is why it's really important to install this fun. So you have this, now the, 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 you, you have a lot of choice. Uh, I, have, I don't have the time to show you, but we did some measurements of the performance of selling funds because these selling funds don't have the same performance. Uh, we could measure for maybe 20 selling fans in the market at the moment the performance in terms of air velocity at the desk level because it's the most important. We want to have one liter per second at, the, at this level. Uh, and we measure the noise generated by the, uh, for different uh, air speed and the power. Uh, rule of thumbs, one selling fan for each 10 square meter. One for each 10 square meter. Uh, the volume that is blown has not a conic shape, but it's a kind of cylinder. Whereas all the manufacturers say in their technical guide that if you install this selling fan, you will cover uh, at least twice the diameter of the fan. This is completely false. It's a cylinder. Uh, and in that case, it works. But in case you have a selling, the distance between the, the selling must be, must be at least the size of one blade. If the selling fan is too close to the selling, there's too much air friction, it, it won't be efficient. So at least, let's say 50 centimeters from the blade to the selling. Uh, let's say in, in France, we have uh, in, in classroom, we have standards, the height of the room is 2.7 meter. So that means that at least the, the fan must be at 2.3 meters. So it, in, the, in this case, it's perfect. And, and there's some fans in the market that have blades, the diameter varies from two meter to seven meter. I show you a picture from the airport. So in big spaces like uh, uh, in industry or in the airport, you can use these very big selling fans. In some building, I see these fines at a height of 10 meters. It's completely uh, non-efficient. And at least put um, in the case of uh, high selling, you need at least, if you respect the, the rule of thumbs, the, the size of the blade, the distance between the fan and the ceiling may be the, the size of one blade, it will work. Do we also have them stand from from the floor, how much should be the distance? Ah, <laughs> it depends on the diameter. From the floor, this one, yes, it, it, it's three meters maximum. But if, if, if for uh, seven meters, uh, when in the, in the airport in Saint Denis, there are uh, maybe, I think it's the same distance as the diameter. So seven meters are seven meters from the ground. Okay, I have finished. Thank you for listening. I think it's ju just time.
mic is there. It's, it's on. It's on, okay. Okay, just to, to add to the presentation of uh, Francois, which was very exhaustive about the principle and all the, I, I just wanted to add a little bit the, the, uh, about, let's say, the issue that you have in India is that we are also going high. And one of the issue is to, to try to bring assisted natural ventilation, saying that we have 90% of the building of people not having AC at the moment, it will change maybe, but so we, it, this is what we try to develop for the, and test for the low cost housing project in Rajkot. So here it's G plus seven, and what we have done in one of the block was to see whether we could have a kind of forced cross ventilation if there is not enough wind, because in, si in this case, in this place, actually there was enough wind, but to demonstrate the principle, we could do it here. So what we have done is to, to try, here is just the CFD simulation, I don't go into detail, but the principle is from the toilet and the bathroom, you have this exhaust, which enter into a main shaft, and on top of the shaft, so this is the shaft seen from the bottom. On top of the shaft, you have, you have a fan at the top. It could be also a venturi if you have enough wind or combine. I mean, this is the, this is the idea. And then we have, what we have done is actually add this fan on top. So this is just the setup for the experiment. Normally you should have only one fan, but we had two fan to be sure of the, to be able to play with the, and then we, we had this long shaft to measure actually the velocity accurately at the end. And so, so you can see the, uh, the real setup where we were measuring. And then this is the, the fans running. And then here you see the measure value of against the design. So the idea was that by having approximately 30 pascal of negative pressure, or let's say difference between the ambient outside and inside, we could have a balanced heat flow, I mean airflow, sorry, that would go through the flat, that would bring something like 12 to 15 air change. Like Francois was explaining before, 12 to 15 air change may not be sufficient for the velocity itself, but people have their ceiling fan anyway. But for, uh, for cooling at night, this is sufficient. So this is actually the results we have obtained from the, we had designed with the CFD and, uh, and even mock-up also model to check. And so we have seen that we are able with approximately one watt per square meter, we are able to bring a cross ventilation, which is balanced within 10, 15% for all the flats, 12 to 15 air change per hour at night with about one watt per square meter additional. So, and it could be certainly still improved on new, on new uh, re-engineered. So, I just wanted to show you that. Yeah. But so, the idea of, of combining venturi effect with uh, an exhaust fan is a good idea in case you have no wind. This image. This is the standard image of the new district. All the buildings are the same height, very low. Just assume, okay, we keep the temperature. The wind comes from that direction. Any suggestion in terms of uh, design? Keep the buildings at the same position. The wind comes at here. What do you suggest in terms of strategy? Exactly. There is a wind wall with maybe four story building, and then after you raise the height of the building, and you, you can use for each building a low pressure shaft. Because each building will be able to catch the low pressure. Okay? So, and, and, and visually, you have a district with different building height which is nicer, I think. So the idea is to have few storeys, wind wall, 
And then after, you raise the number of the story, and each building has its own shaft, operational shaft. Quickly, uh, quickly we will have this uh, feedback. Uh, 